what did really change with the evolution of transformer and more more particularly can you talk about the paper attention is all we need and because this is really when the genesis of that happened things went from being a hypothetical like trust me this is going to be good soon to oh my god i can use it right now it's here creative industry will never face disruption from ai ai will never touch the creative industry it was like that was just like not true a lot of new lessons have got to be learned and new kind of rule books new way of kind of doing things and what's establishing what's fair use we reached here a bit sooner than we expected when the paper was kind of like released it it didn't kind of get maybe the traction it actually kind of deserved it took people a little bit of time to kind of realize quite what was there in terms of this like seminal piece of work this kind of milestone which people could you know this this new architecture that was presented that allowed people to do things in a dramatically kind of different way we should think about some of the things that enabled and how it changed the view uh, that people had of kind of AI. Now, everyone is kind of familiar with the term large language models. Now, before large language models, there were, say, just language models, and there would be this incredible work that was happening. But it was a particular task to do with um, what we'd call obstructive text summarization, which was really like paraphrasing. Like, so here is like a, you know, a, a one page rant from Naveen, our CEO, at me for, for doing something wrong. And I wanted to kind of get maybe the summary of it. If I passed it through a language model, um, it, the actual kind of output in those kind of early days wouldn't be that great. It would kind of like jumble things up a little bit and it, the initial quality, and it wasn't really usable. I couldn't use it as is. And then we kind of fast forward and with this kind of transformer based approaches in terms of large language models being introduced, then it was suddenly like we had this kind of explosion where um, the thing chat GPT is obviously the famous moment in, in this, the November time, but it was really um, prior to that we were, we were getting the, the early signals that suddenly people could be presented with something which was, wow, this is usable. This is actually like, we don't need to kind of pass this over to a Turing test to see if this passes for real. Everyone could suddenly see that this, the output from these, these models was like usable and it was like you then had this flurry of people like, I wonder if I can make get um, ChatGPT to write me a, a rap song in the, the style of Michelangelo to Albert Einstein, all these different kind of like crazy use cases, but the output was suddenly real and people could actually see it and use it. And I think that was perhaps this sort of transformational moment where things went from being a hypothetical like, trust me, this is going to be good soon, to, oh my God, I can use it right now, it's here. And I think that really sparked so much imagination and that kind of creativity of what, what would ultimately the use cases be. It was, it was always that hesitation. Um, and there wasn't really like, there's almost a skepticism of like, is it going to kind of be real? Is this sort of like, is it sort of like a, a sort of like an NFT, which has obviously its kind of place in the world, but you know, it, whereas is it kind of like a blockchain where you're kind of, maybe you're, some of the use cases you're, you're a little bit forced, maybe it's kind of like versus something which everyone could potentially be using. And I think that was the, the real difference that, that we kind of saw. I remember before the launch of chat DPT, machine learning and uh, anything closely resembled to yeah. that word was intimidating. Yeah, you yeah. know, you need researcher and you need engineers and possibly if you are a net, yeah. not a tech person, yeah, yeah. people won't even attempt it, you know, and it's hard to explain, you know, what is my prediction logic is doing, yeah. what my, uh, you know, uh, how even I'm computing my margin and all that, you know, so it, it always sounded very complex and it was hard to explain it to non-engineering people but yeah, what yeah. chat GPT does I could see that you know from child to anyone yeah, yeah. it just removed that barrier right yeah. it, it sort of just made it an even feel for everyone. Whilst that happened there was also this incredible work happening when we think about kind of images being kind yeah. of created it, suddenly it was like oh my god that looks real like that's that's surely that's a photo isn't it or like and it was just kind of incredible and I think that in the past it's, it's like industries that we didn't necessarily think would be disrupted. Suddenly, like the creative industry, going to the creative industry will never face disruption from AI. AI will never touch the creative industry was like, that was just like not true in terms of there's been incredible kind of disruption. And now anyone can kind of go on to, uh, online and sort of like craft their prompt to create this kind of uh, beautiful image. And it, it's there and it just, some of these things look, look kind of like stunning. And it, it does open up a kind of a raft of sort of like 
of almost like of ethical issues about like, well, what, what, where does this kind of training data kind of come from? And I noticed that certain companies have taken a stance where they've deliberately collected art to use as training data, which is only in the kind of the, the public domain. Um, and so like Google has kind of done that with their kind of image gen kind of product. And so there are, it, it's like a lot of new lessons have got to be learned and new kind of rule books, a new way of kind of doing things and what's establishing what's fair use and what's right and wrong. And like courts have got to kind of decide these things that we, I think we, we reached here a bit sooner than we expected and we didn't necessarily, you know, as an industry have all of these, these answers solved. And I think some of them are still kind of playing out now. A lot of foundational models are there. You know, we work with yeah, yeah, yeah. so many of them. There is open AI, there is a yeah. uh, Gemini family of models. Yeah. You have Llama yeah. and uh, Anthropic, Coher and, yeah. you know, Claude and, yeah. you know, recently all coming up. How that measurement is happening in your world? You know, how you are making a call, uh, which one to choose?